So today I'm going to go through removing and replacing keys on a ThinkPad keyboard. You'll note that my test keyboard here is missing a couple keys already, which is why I'm going to do this demonstration on this. And I'm going to show you the two main parts of replacing your keys. You'll have the actual top piece, which has the letter or number on it, and then you'll have the switch. It's a little scissor switch that's it helps make the keystroke. I'll show you on the back of this key. You'll see the little clasps where the scissor switch holds onto. All right. So first I'm gonna show you how to take off a key. Taking off keys is very easy. You may have done it inadvertently yourself. What I'm gonna use is a pick. You can use a screwdriver or whatever you have handy. And put it under one side of the key. Lift up. And it'll pop right off. That's how you get the key off. You'll note under this, how the scissor switches are on the keyboard. They stay on the keyboard even if the little keycaps are off. Sometimes, however, if something gets caught on your keys and rips them off, the scissor switches might come off. So first I'm going to show you how to take it off, and then I'm going to show you how to put it back on. Taking off the scissor switches is relatively easy. What you're going to want to do is use your implement, and on the side in the middle of where the scissor switch actually scissors, push this way. So kind of pull away from one side, and pull up. The key will kind of pop off, so make sure you don't pull too hard. And there's our scissor switch. Okay? Now, if you're using a sharp implement like I am, you'll want to be very cautious when you're pulling things apart because these little plungers are just made out of rubber. Uh, as you'll note, somebody already took this one off, so it's kind of messed up. Um, but they'll, they'll pop right off there, like that. So if you do that, then you'll have to buy a new keyboard. So don't do that, just be very cautious. Okay, reinstalling the scissor switch is somewhat tedious, but not too hard once you get the hang of it. If you'll note, on the sides, let's see if I can zoom in here, on the sides of the switch are little nubs. Okay, now these nubs go inside of four corresponding holes on the sides of this keyboard. So you'll have, it goes here, 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 and here. Now your goal is to get all four nubs in the four holes. Now the way I do this is I open the, open the scissor up a little bit like this and then put the right side in. Okay, so put the right side in and leave it just sitting there. So now you've got the right side, it's in here, it's in here, and these two are not in. Open up the scissor, just a little bit again, and line it up so that you can just push down on the scissor. Now, when you have the plunger in there, this one doesn't have the plunger anymore, so it's a little bit easier. But when you have the plunger in there, it's going to give you some back resistance, so you will need to push down. You'll hear it snap into place, and sometimes the white leg, this white leg, will not go all the way in. I'll show you on this, this one over here. Again, put the right side in, two holes. Okay, lay the left side out, and then push down, okay? You'll hear that the back leg back here popped in. This one did not. Now to remedy this, you'll, you'll feel that it still presses like a normal key, but it's a little lopsided. So make sure when you're checking all your keys that this last leg is in place. What I do is just take my pick and push it down. And it, take, it takes a little time and a little patience because you can't force it just like that. 
So now we have switch installed and now the key is the easy part. You'll note that on the back, again, there are the little clasps. Those correspond with the bars on your scissor switch. So what you want to do is line up the key and just push down. And there you go, it's reinstalled. So now you know how to take apart the keys on your keyboard. Uh, every once in a while, I'll pull my keyboard apart, uh, leaving the switches on. I don't take the switches off, but if you pull all the caps off, it's really easy to blow away dirt and wipe away anything that has gotten caught under there. So it's pretty, pretty uh, cool knowledge to have. So you can keep your keyboard clean, and just in case somebody else pulls some keys off of your ThinkPad, you'll always be able to replace them. I just wanted to note one more thing. If you look at these keyboards, you'll notice that these keys right here are inverted. So you see how this is white, 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 and then these ones have white, 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 and then this one's also white on the bottom. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why that is. I think it probably has something to do with the pointer nub, uh, but just something to consider if you're replacing all the keys or any of these keys, uh, don't force it in. Notice that the braces are on the top for these four keys, whereas on the rest of the keys, they're on the bottom. Also, on the longer keys, you'll note that there is a metal bar. It's pretty self-explanatory how this works. Uh, if you look, for instance, on the space bar, there will be one hole right here, and then the other hole right here, and that's where your little hooks on the metal part hook into. So if you're taking off the space bar, you want to pry from the bottom and then remove the metal bar, and that's how that works.